Hello, I'm Dr. Laura Maria, President and CEO of the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. It is our privilege to meet today with one of our Houston legends, Dr. Richard Tapia, who I've known for many, many decades. He is a mathematician, a professor at Rice University, and um, among all of his many accomplishments, it is the many, many, many people, thousands, of young people that he has touched throughout his career in a space that is a complicated one, and yet he does it with such grace. We're happy to announce that he's been in this for over 50 years, and today we're gonna to learn a little bit more about him. Dr. Thapia, thank yes. you, thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, it's exciting. Thank well, you. Thank you, and you've done so much. Uh, you have a span of career of over 50 years as a mathematician yeah. professor. And it's not something that you see very many Mexican-Americans do. No, but we're seeing more, okay? And I, I want to serve as a role model to see, look, I grew up as Mexican-American, born in the United States, and, and I didn't go to special schools or have special things. I went from a weak high school to community college, to UCLA, and into the professorate. So I paid my dues. I mean, yes. I went through maybe the back way, but I got there. But what always carried me was the belief that I could, I can, si se puede. Yes. And the fact that I knew I had math talent. It didn't matter what anybody said. I could see that I did have that, okay? so. One step, one step, one step. And my mother, my mother was not educated. She came from Mexico at the age of 12 with no parents. And she would say to me, one step at a time will get you to a great place. If you go one step at a time along the rainbow path, at the end there'll be a pot of gold. And I used to say, Mom, that's so naive. But she was right, yes. she, she was right. Yes. And so I just kept going, I didn't know one direction and click, but one step, okay. And education. My mother came from Mexico believing that education could take you wherever you wanted to go. And so I have a, a brother who went to Yale who has a law degree. I have a sister who went to um, UCLA and then USC. She has a, a law degree. So whatever it was that my brother, my mother brought from Mexico, okay, was this belief in education. She came here in the desire to be educated. But when she came, she came alone, and the uncle she was gonna, uh, she lived with, didn't believe in education for women. So he said, you have to go clean houses, okay? And so my mother was never able to get the education that she came to the United States for, okay? But she sure believed it, and she sure taught it to us children, okay? So all her children have degrees. There was five of us, okay? And um, so it, it was not a direct thing. I mean, she didn't beat us over the head. She just made us slowly think that going forward in education was gonna be a good thing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have a lot of guidance in school. I didn't have counselors pick me up and tell me. I just had to believe in myself, and my mother taught me that belief, okay? and so. You know, even though I grew up as a humble, you know, Mexican-American, okay, I grew up in the 60s, so I, I can use the word Chicano because that's what I grew up. I grew up in the movement of the, and it made me proud. It made me very proud. And so, inside, and in fondo del corazón, okay, I believed and I knew that I could, and that was enough to take me to all these unusual places, okay? yes. beautiful places. And along the way though, you must have seen professors that looked like you, or did you not see them? There, no, in fact, I had one professor at UCLA. Yes. His name was David Sanchez, okay? And he was, the, he was not only the only Mexican-American, he was the only minority, I mean, there were no blacks, okay? So the answer to your point was, no, I didn't really. I had colleagues. There's an organization called SACNAS, Society for the Advancement of Chicanos and Native Americans in Science. 1972, we started it. And I met 
other people like me who are just starting as professors or in other areas. And we bonded. I mean, J.V. Martinez, Rodrigo Banuelos, all these, we bonded in 1972 like we were brothers, okay? Now, the interesting thing is, people are gonna say, what about women? In those days, there were no women. There were no women. When I started teaching at Rice, it was 10% women, okay? So Sotnas on the board, we had no women in 1972. So it wasn't that we excluded them. But I have today, if I think of Familia, there's gonna be a lot of people that I love who I met as we grew up together as Mexican-American professors, okay? Yes. We all grew up together, okay? Yes. So I didn't have one person that said, oh, look at that model, okay? But we were a group. Yes. We were a beautiful group. Yes. And so, you know, around my heart, okay, alrededor del corazón, yo soy mexicano, pero en el centro del corazón, soy chicano. And going back to your mother, what an honor that her son uh, was the first Hispanic elected to the National Academy of Engineering. And in 1996, that President Clinton appointed you to the National Science Board. Yes. Unheard of. Yes. But, but those two are, are great achievements. And I love that. I do love being recognized, okay? I, I enjoy talking to wonderful people like you, okay? But my biggest honor is winning the National Medal of Science. The National Medal of Science is the highest honor given by the United States government to a scientist or engineer. And I won that in 2011 and I received the award from President Obama, okay? Only Latino, not the first. I mean, yes, the first, but only. There have been no Latinos winning that award. And I want to be the role model to say, look, we can do it. Yes. That's what I want to see. So if I've been anything, it's a role model to say, yes, you can, si se puede. And it was, well, of course it was beautiful and wonderful being in the White House receiving the award. You know, as they, when President Obama was coming out, uh, I've always said, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, okay? And then you hear the music, hail to the chief. and. He, President Obama came out. Now, if you grew up in this country, it's going to put goosebumps on your arms. How yes. can it not? Okay. Yes. And and so um, it was a great moment. It's a great moment. I cherish it, and I want it to serve not just for me. I want it to serve for us, la gente. Okay. Yes. And uh, my son, my daughter, and my wife were there, and. Um, my wife is New Yorkan, okay, Puerto Rican from New York, okay, and she uh, was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and myasthenia gravis in, in, in the 70s. So she was in a wheelchair at the White House, and she was in the front row. And when they announced my name, she just cheered and cheered, okay, and President Obama looked at me and he said, is that your wife? And I said, yes, that is my wife, okay. and, and um, the rapport was really good, okay? And then she spoke to him, and she, she's not shy. <laughs> I mean, Puerto Ricans are not shy, okay? Right. And anyway, yes, it is an outstanding memory, and I do, it, it gives me, my credentials introduce me. I give talks at places like MIT and Stanford and Caltech, and my credentials precede me. I mean. They say this, well, look, Tapia cannot be a total turkey because look at the awards he's won, okay? And so I've given presidential uh, um, lectures at universities. I've given commencement addresses. I gave a commencement address at UCLA. And so my credentials precede me. And how many times do I have some high school student come up to me and say, I read about you. Our teacher told us about you, yes. and that's what I want. That's what I want. I want to proudly say, yes, yes, we can do it, and that's what I do. 
And so I am a product of this country. I'm a product of Los Angeles, okay, with parents from Mexico. And there are a lot of us like that, okay? Yes. And it makes me very proud to be a member of the heritage, Mexican heritage, plus an America. Yes. I mean, I am a product of the United States. I'm not a product of Mexico. I'm a product of the United States. But I have the heritage that I'm proud of together. Well, and we're proud of you. And, and you've kind of alluded to it, but specifically, what would you like your legacy to be? My legacy uh, that excellence, one of excellence and caring. So in other words, I worked with the community. I worked with students. For example, at universities, we direct PhD students. So in other words, you know, you get to be the advisor. I, I've had 16 women PhD students in my career at Rice. So 16 women in mathematics. I don't think anybody can match that. I've had 16 underrepresented minorities. Okay, I don't think anybody can match it. So I, I want my legacy to be quality, that I was a good mathematician and a caring person and that I, I served as not only talking the talk, but walking the talk, that I did that. So I get back at night and I start to think, because I, I, I lost my wife 10 months ago, okay? My wife of 63 years. So at night I just think about things and I think about her and I think about us and I think that. And I say, I've been a, traveled a long way. I've been you know, over many bridges, okay, and under many bridges, and I feel good. I'm happy. I'm happy with the accomplishment because without trying to brag or try to say uh, things, you know, that, that are borderline bragging, I did a lot, and I'm happy for it. It wasn't the plan. I just did what I could do as it came along. I saw a need. I didn't plan to become a teacher. I didn't become, plan to become a professor. I just saw the need. And as I started to work with students, okay, in particular, let's say, Latino students, I would say, I've been there. Yes. I know where you are. I know where you're going. I've been there. I can help you. And they immediately look at me and they say, you are like me, okay? I've been talking to other professors, but they don't understand me, and they don't know who I am, okay? But you know who I am because you are one of us, okay? Yes. So I'm, I'm mellow on those things, okay? There's been some really sad things in my life, but there's also been some great things, okay? Perhaps the saddest thing, uh, see, when my wife died, she was 81 years old, so I mean, she lived a full life. But 40 years ago, I had a 21-year-old daughter. Her name was Cersei, and she was killed in an automobile accident. She was a student at Rice at the time. And that comes back every day, every day. So when you lose um, a child, you lose a part of your future. When you lose your parents, you lose a part of the past. So. Every day I have to, one way or another, even if I'm not trying to, Cersei, my late daughter, comes into my memories, okay? And my wife does too. But with my wife, she lives a full life. She, she, she taught dance, she did a lot of things. So I reckon with myself and say, there's a lot to be happy for. Yes. And the country offers a lot. And there's a lot of wonderful people. There are wonderful people in my profession. You know, I could say to you, oh, it's been so difficult and people weren't nice to me. But that's not true. That's not true. People supported me and helped me. When I was young, uh, senior mathematicians would watch for me. Okay? Sure, I had the neighbors and other people saying, oh, you're second class because you're Mexican-American. But it's been a good world. Yes. It's been a good, good world. Well, and you've been good to this world. So for that and so much more, Dr. Thapia, we want to thank you and congratulate you on being 
a Houston legend. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, and I, I, I appreciate that. And, and you know, to me, I just want to serve as this role model, as I said. And this is so, so I'm happy, and I thank you for this. Thank you. Well, we appreciate you joining us. We'll see you very soon. Thank you.